The Xbox Series S is looking very, very real. So it's late and we have just seen a absolute avalanche of leaks all over Twitter about the brand new lower end version of the Xbox Series X, aptly named the Xbox Series S. Right now it looks like we are on November 10th going to be looking at two brand new next generation Xbox consoles. First of all, the one that we already know, the Xbox Series X, looks to launch at the $500 price point, at least assuming that all of these leaks which have just absolutely taken over tonight are true. Now that's an aggressive price point, but we'll talk a little bit about that later because what's really exciting is the Xbox Series S at $299. Yeah, so this next generation is looking, uh, it's looking spicy. So not only are there photos of this Xbox Series S floating around, but there's even a snippet of what I can only assume is the Microsoft launch video for the Series S. I'll play it for you now. See it in its actual form for the first time and how small it is. It is. So what this clip really shows is the size of that Series S. So it is much more akin to something like the Xbox One S compared to the Series X, which while when you look at it beside something like a PlayStation 5 is actually relatively reasonably sized, but it's a little bit of a thick boy. However, with the Series S, I'm assuming that they're going to go with much more tradi traditional cooling, and therefore they're going to go for a console which looks a lot more like what we're used to seeing. Now it's kind of hard to see from this specific video the exact dimensions, but inside you're going to be getting a lot of that next generation capabilities. So the Xbox Series S at $299 of course does have some cutbacks compared to the full Series X. So first and foremost, the most obvious thing is going to be the fact that it will not have a disk drive. Now this is something that has been rumored for almost a year, maybe a year and a half at this point. And pretty much from the beginning, it was meant to be almost like a spiritual successor to the Xbox One S All Digital Edition. So while you're giving up the optical drive, which let's face it, probably not that important to most of you, and of course there is also a PlayStation 5 with no optical drive. But beyond that, there are a few more cuts. Essentially, this is meant to be a console which is focused at 1080p and maybe a little bit of 1440p gaming, whereas the Series X, if you want to pay another $200 for it, will give you that full fat 4K experience with a lot of games running at 120 FPS. So the spec right now seems to indicate that we will be looking at about a 4 teraflop GPU on the Series S compared to 12 teraflops on the Series X. However, these aren't quite apples to apples compared to something like the Xbox One X, which famously had a six teraflop GPU. So there are a few reasons behind this. First of all, a teraflop is not just a teraflop. You can't actually directly compare them between generations. So there have been a lot of improvements on the AMD RDNA 2.0 side on the very technical level to give you more performance per flop. So I wouldn't be surprised if the graphics are roughly on par with what we're able to see on the Xbox One X. However, it is going to be much better in pretty much all other aspects. So it very much seems like it's going to have the same, if not very similar CPU performance. So we're going from those ancient, slow Jaguar CPU cores on the current generation to much faster AMD Ryzen-based cores, or more specifically Zen 2-based cores. So think something like a current day Ryzen 7 in performance. On top of that, it will also, of course, have a standard SSD. Now this is important. Just like we have with the Xbox One today, you'll be able to buy a game once on the Series... Series S? Series X? The Xbox Series? I guess we need to think about the name for this next generation. Anyway, regardless, you'll be able to buy the same game, and of course it will run on Series S as well as Series X, but the main difference will really be in the actual level of performance. The Series X is very clearly the more capable of the two consoles, but at $200 more or almost double the price, you kind of expect that. So it is of course supporting 4K and 120 FPS and all that kind of stuff. And I'm really going to be curious to see what the Series S is actually really able to be able to will kick out, right? I mean, sure, it will 100% support 4K in theory, right? You'll be able to watch 4K YouTube and Netflix and everything. But beyond that, the games, I assume, well, just like the current Xbox One S and One X, be able to be upscaled to 4K, right? So if you're playing at 1080p or 1440, and of course, because modern games are really very heavily reliant on dynamic resolution, it'll likely be kind of in that sort of area. So if you have a 1080p display, then I'm sure it'll look beautiful and clean and Honestly, probably not that different than the Xbox Series X. But if you do have a 4K TV, like more and more people are these days, you should still see some advantage over going up to that higher resolution. It absolutely will not look as clear and crisp, and you may not have things like 120 FPS support like you do on the Series X. But when you look at a brand new next generation console available for $300, I think that is a really, 
really compelling pitch. Maybe on purely just the $299 price for the Series S, the $499 price for the Series X, these videos, as well as the November 10th launch date, we also have word that they will be available with the all access, well, let's say subscription, but it's almost like a financing plan. So this is actually something that is available for the Xbox One right now. So you can pay a small monthly fee, get the console, and you also get things like Game Pass included as well. So this time around, it does seem like they will be offering it and they'll be offering it at a pretty aggressive price point. So of course, keep in mind, you can still purchase these consoles outright just like you can before. However, supposedly for only $25 a month, you'll be able to purchase an Xbox Series S console and you will also get that Game Pass subscription, which considering that that's usually $10 to $15 based on which one they include, is actually really not bad. I mean, that's like 15 bucks a month for the Xbox. Now, if you want to go up to the Xbox Series X, supposedly that will be available with this subscription at only $35 a month. Now, of course, there's some questions as far as how this will actually be implemented. But if you're talking about the idea that these consoles are going to be relatively affordable, I mean, even if you pay full price, but especially if you do the monthly plan, and on top of that, it's coming with Game Pass, which comes with lots and lots of great exclusives, including basically everything first party, so Flight Simulator, whenever that shows up on Xbox, Halo, et cetera, et cetera, will all be included for $25 to $35 a month. That is a really, really compelling price. Now, of course, grain of salt, warning, like always, but if this is the case, look, I'm not gonna say that I think right now, before especially seeing all these leaks, that I was like, oh, of course Xbox is gonna win. I mean, Sony has a ton of momentum from the PlayStation 4. The PS5 does look good, and especially the game lineup looks crazy for the PS5. When you start playing around with these very, what I would say reasonable prices, very much likely that they're going to be cheaper than something like the PS5 or even the PS5 Digital Edition. I think there's a lot of people who might be a little bit more interested in Xbox this time around, right? I mean, even if you have it as a secondary console, you're talking 25 bucks a month, 35 bucks a month, or even three to $500. I mean, you consider that these consoles, and especially that Xbox Series X, are going to be more powerful than the vast majority of gaming PCs out there. Maybe not on the complete crazy high end, but still, this is a major, major step forward. And at $500, I think that's a pretty reasonable price. I think Sony's going to be right around that level, give or take $50. But when you look at something like the Series S, I don't think Sony has any kind of response to it. $300 for a next generation console is kind of nuts. And while sure, you're going to be losing the optical drive, which, I mean, may or may not be important to you. And of course, you are going to be losing some of that performance. But if you're able to play the same games with all the next-gen features and all you're really losing is a little bit of resolution, I think that's a very, very reasonable trade. Especially if you're someone who's leaning on the Sony side of the fence, you're about to ready to go out and buy that PS5. Well, 300 bucks, you can also get yourself an Xbox and you can really kind of have the best of both worlds. Play the Microsoft exclusives, especially the ones that don't make it to, well, I was about to say the ones that don't make it to PC, but I don't think there's a lot of those these days. And of course, you still get all of the Sony games on that PlayStation side of the camp as well. So anyway, I'm very excited, but I'm curious, what do you think about the brand new Xbox Series S? And more importantly, are you gonna buy an Xbox Series S or an X or a PS5? Or are you just gonna save your shekels for an RTX 3090? <laughs> Don't do that, it seems like a bad idea. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Make sure to subscribe for lots more console content like this. And I will catch you after I finally go to sleep. It's, it's late. <laughs>